Hey guys, what is up? My name is Brienne and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be bringing you guys along for a Shadow Hunter book tag to kick off my Shadow Hunter reading marathon. Alrighty, so the first question is who is your favorite character? I think I would have to say my favorite shadow hunter character would either be Simon even though he's not a shadow hunter or Emma Carstairs because Simon he has so much character development through all of the books that he's in and he starts off as just a side character or so we think but without him they literally would have died in Edom in the final book and I find it so awesome that if Simon hadn't been turned into a vampire in book two he, like, nobody would have still been alive after that final book because he is the only reason they survived and I said Emma Carstairs because she just shows so much resilience and self-control in her life. Like she's lost her parents and her whole family and she still goes on. And she finds out that she can't be with the one boy she loves because he's her parabatite and they still find a way to make it work without hurting anyone. And they solve the entire, like, they don't solve it, but they like intervene in this huge social debate and argument about the clave and its politics at like 17 is anyone going to question that i just i love her because she's so snarky and sassy and she gets what she wants because she does what she needs to to get it without hurting other people question number two is who is your otp or one true pairing for my like OTP of all of the Shadowhunter books, I think I have to just go with the classic, the very beginning of Alec and Magnus. Like, I love their relationship and it's so sweet and they go through so much to be together. And it takes Alec such a long time to come to terms with who he is. But at the same time, Magnus is willing to wait and he's not pushing him, he's not trying to change him. And he saves, Magnus saves his life and Alec willingly gives Magnus his strength after that so that because he wants to be in battle with everyone else, but then he realizes Magnus is just fighting in his own way in the battle and he's willing to do whatever he can to help his fellow shadow hunters. And I think they just make such a dynamic team and they do so well together and their life goals honestly line up so well. They didn't to start with, but as both of them like grew as characters and people, it changed them and it changed what they wanted and it lined up and everything worked out for them. And they're the most realistic couple too because they fight and you see the fights and you see the breakups but they get back together and it's not like oh okay we're back together no like they solve their issues and they talk through them and they solve stuff instead of just i want to be with you so we're going to be together even though like there's this issue in this one and this one they work through that stuff and i really appreciate that appreciate that in books because it's not done very often and i absolutely love it like I will always root for Alec and Magnus and I am so devoted to their to their elders curse series like I have the second one pre-ordered and I've read the first one and I'm so excited to see more of them and that's one of the main reasons I'm doing my reread marathon of the Shadowhunter books is just to see them grow as characters again. Question three is what is your favorite quote from the books? So I have 
two absolute favorite quotes from all of her books and they are in the exact same book, City of Heavenly Fire. And I only have one of them highlighted on Goodreads, so I'm going to read that one off to you real quick. And it says, in quotes, her romance novel slave, Isabel repeated as if Alec were being particularly dense. Alec shook his head as if he were having a bad dream. You know what? Don't explain. Just put your clothes on, both of you. And I like that development in Simon and Izzy's relationship and the relationship that Alec kind of just lets happen that he was not okay with in the first, like, two, three books. <laughs> but he gets there and he lets his sister make his own decisions. He just does not like walking in on them. Because that seems to be a theme in Cassandra Clare books where, you know, people are always walking in on other people. <laughs> Uncomfortable situations I would never like to be in. And then my other one is when they are all in Edom and Jace asks Alec why he didn't make a pie. And Alec gives him three reasons. He said, one, because I do not know how to make a pie. Two, because I do not have the ingredients to make a pie. And then Jace asks, what's the third? Because he pauses. And then this is my favorite quote right here. I had to give you a little context is, because I am not your bitch. I think that shows the real character development in Alec because in the beginning of the series, if they were in Edom and Jace asked him to make a pie, it wouldn't have mattered what he had. He would have found a way to make some sort of pie. But he is so confident in himself and comfortable with himself now and with the character development that he's had that he's really comfortable with making those kinds of jokes with somebody he should be able to and they all get a good laugh out of it and it's so funny and we like not just the characters laugh at it like it's something that you don't notice right away that's like because it's so funny but it's so impactful to the development of his character. Question four is, in your opinion, who is the sexiest shadow hunter? So, since I'm indecisive, I can never decide on anything, I've chosen two characters for this question. One female, one male. So I will start by saying the sexiest male character is from the last three books of the original Mortal Instruments series, and I would like to just state that that is Sebastian Morgenstern. Like, hot damn. I'm sorry. Like, I... When it comes to guys, I've got that streak for just bad boys. It's probably not the best, but he is a fictional character, not come to life, so I'm okay with it. Like, there's no harm in liking a fictional villain. I hope not. <laughs> but, in my opinion, the sexiest female character in all of the Shadowhunter books is Cordelia Carstairs. Because not only is she so confident with herself and she knows what she wants, but she's such a badass. Like, she can fight. She can defend people with not just, like, her sword, but with her words. And she wields Cortana. Like, she is a badass. And to make it even better, she's in love with James. So she knows a good guy when she sees one. Question five is, if you could have any Shadowhunter last name, what would it be? So, I think I would have to say, if I could choose a Shadowhunter last name, I would choose Lovelace, but with like 
different tests that I've taken online about <sighs> shadow hunter last names, it seems I would be a Blackthorn. Don't mind it, really don't. But personally, I like the shadow hunter last name of Lovelace because it seems very delicate and very sweet. But like you're a shadow hunter, so you can be like badass and like sound delicate and sweet and put together and proper. But then like you can whoop someone's ass. Like that sounds awesome. And that's what that's the last name Simon decides to take when he becomes a shadow hunter. So like who wouldn't want to be related to Simon? He's awesome. He's like one of the best characters. Question six is, who is your favorite actor off of the TV show? My favorite actor from the TV show is Matthew D'Addario, and he plays Alec. Like, he does such a good job portraying the different internal struggles that he has. And at times I don't like the character Alec in the TV show just because they write him differently than he is in the books. But he does a really good job at just being present in who the character is. And he has such great chemistry with the actor who plays Magnus so that that relationship is still intact and holds so much value still. Question seven is who is your favorite actress off of the TV show. I would have to say that my favorite actress off of the TV show is Catherine McNamara. Catherine McNamara. She plays Clary Frey. She does such an awesome job at making Clary seem more like a badass and what she would have been like if she really was supposed to be 18 because they age all the characters up so much in the show, which is one thing I did not like because it it was such a good book and series because she was 15, 16 years old. But Catherine does such a good job portraying Clary as if she was 18 and all the emotions and she's present as she's acting and not just going through the emotions like some of the actors. Question eight is would you rather listen to Jace play the piano, Jem play the violin, or play video games with Simon. I personally love video games, but I get motion sick while playing them. So that knocks off being able to play video games with Simon, sadly. Though if I had the option, I would kind of just like let him play video games and just kind of lay in his lap and watch him. Like that sounds so creepy, not in that kind of way, but like you're spending time with him and you're getting to like notice his personality more in person which seems so cool to do um i think personally i would like to listen to um gem play the violin because he is uh written as a character who has played the violin his whole life and it's something that he is absolutely amazing at and I would like to see where that goes and like how good he actually is because I almost played the violin in middle school and I think it would be really nice to hear some really, really good violin playing because that music is so calming. Question nine is if you could have any ruin tattooed on your body, which would it be? So I would have to say, and this is my opinion, if the ruins that I got to choose tattooed on me actually worked, I would like the calm anger one uh, because it's supposed to calm you down and keep you from getting angry so that you s actually see the truth and your understanding and not jumping to conclusions. And I have... Um, uh, just a few issues with controlling my temper sometimes and is it the worst times where I wish I was actually calm so I think it would be nice to have that 
and I really like the design of it because it's so simple. It's literally just a cross with little U's on the ends and it's really pretty and I think it would come in really handy. Question uh, 10 is what downworlder would you most likely be? My friends have already told me and compared me to this all the time. They said if I were any downworlder, they said I would 100% be a fairy. I don't know if I should take that to offense or not, but they say since I don't lie, but sometimes I don't like exactly tell them stuff right away. I can, I'm very creative with my words and I know how to do stuff. So they say I'd be a fairy. Even though sometimes I say, oh, I'd be a vampire because I sleep all day most of the time and I'm up like all night. And I love, I love being up at night, but like I love nature and they're right. I do get very creative with how I word things. So yeah, I would be a fairy, 100%. 100%. And question 11 is the immortal instruments or the infernal devices. So this one's a little difficult for me because when I think of the Immortal Instruments, I really kind of just think the first two books and the last one. And I really like those ones in the series. But if I have to choose between like the entire six book Immortal Instruments series and the three book trilogy of the Infernal Devices, I would have to say the Infernal Devices because it has so much more character development and the plot itself is more concentrated onto what's actually going on and isn't like really out there and hard to believe because there's some parts in the mortal instruments where it's like uh would is he really that much of a psychopath that he would do that or is this just kind of his flair the Infernal Devices, though, it makes sense. The mystery is you're actually able to follow, and you see a lot of characters, too, like Magnus and Tessa, and I love them. Like, they are some of my favorites, and it's nice to see them when they meet, which you don't see in the Mortal Instruments. So it's a nice history, and you see more of what shadow hunters were like and what they were considered to be like in like early 2000s it's really that difference that i like seeing in the infernal device question 12 is who is your most hated character out of the books this one's easy like it shouldn't even be a question it 100 percent valentine like i get it he's the bad guy for a reason because he's horrible but um d did he really have to make jace and clary think they were siblings because that brought in a lot of like incest that was not needed and frankly probably would have like made the books better like without all of that I probably would have liked it even more because it's just so weird so weird like we know they're not actually related by like the third book but really like you have to have that like that's mm -mm. Mm -mm. no way mm -mm. no like why would you purposely write or have someone you raised and your biological daughter think that they're actually related when you know they're attracted to each other like if they were actually related yes please tell them because like not okay but they're not actually related so you're just really you're being disgusting and it needs to stop like I don't care about the whole wanting to take down the clave because there's some shit in it that they need to change anyways. But you don't make 
two teenagers believe that they're related when they're attracted to each other, when they're not actually related. It's disgusting. Question 13 is if you could spend a day with any character, who would it be? Easy, 100% Simon, because he's like so much like me. Cause like we're both so much nerds and it's just so nice because he's into so many things and it's so his mind works in so many ways that we don't like get to see and i would love to be able to just like sit down and watch him play video games and like chill out whereas like we spent the day with jace or clary or will herondale or tessa tessa maybe Tess is awesome, but like any of the others, it would be like, oh, let's go train. Like we need to train at some point throughout the day. Simon's kind of just like, eh, we can do that later. Let's play video games. Like that's the kind of person he is. And I would love to be able to spend the day with someone like that. Like it's awesome. He's one of my favorite characters. It'd be so cool. Either him or Magnus, because Magnus is awesome. He's glitter, awesome. Cat eyes, awesome. Funny, awesome fashionable perfect i don't see how i can choose between simon and magnus i'd love to spend the day with either of them question 14 is out of all of the books which is your favorite so it is a very easy choice for me to decide which one is my favorite because i i was so excited for this one to come out I absolutely loved it. I had like no critiques on it and I got it before it was released. So that was even better. And I got, I have to say my favorite, absolute favorite all time is Chain of Gold. Um, like it's the first one in this series. I think it's supposed to be a trilogy, but I'm okay if it goes longer because this is amazing. The ending, oh my God, nobody expected the ending. <laughs> Um, I was so mad at Grace the entire book. Um, I loved James, but he really just needs to take that stupid bracelet off. Um, Lucy, she is amazing. She's such a badass. Like, nobody realizes it, but, like, she's amazing. And then Jesse, I want to see where the storyline with Jesse goes. Um, Tatiana pissed me off the entire book i'm like why are you such a crab you don't need to be like i get it your family's dead but you got grace and nobody's being mean to you you're kind of just being mean to yourself and ostracizing yourself question 15 is which book had the worst cliffhanger Again, for me, this one is really easy. And the cliffhanger in this book, I just absolutely hate it. I'm like, you're gonna hurt him like that? Like, he is such a sweetheart and you're gonna hurt him like that. Was Lady Midnight. And I read this one right after Lord of Shadows came out. So I bought this one and Lord of Shadows at the same time. So I was able to jump right from this one into Lord of Shadows. Which I will be doing again so I will not know the pain of waiting for the next one but I hated the cliffhanger like, it was so like you really had to treat him like that like you are in love with him but you need him like you need him and I understand you can't like have him but like don't treat him like that he's going to love you either way get over it question 16 is what was your favorite scene from any of the books again this one is easy i think it's just because like all of them are in my more recent reads of cassandra clare books but um yeah i like the scene where they wake up on the beach after they kind of like did it in book one like i i liked it like i liked the scene of where he saves her but then like they wake up on the beach and he's not he's there and he breaks her heart because he's like i can't be with her she's my parabatai 
Oops. Uh, yeah. He realizes his mistake and he has that bit of oh shit panic where it's like, I thought with the wrong head. And it's kind of cute and funny to see that, but then it like breaks your heart because he has to end. Question 17 is James or Will? I think I made this one clear when I said Chain of Gold was my favorite. Um, yeah, James. 100% James. Uh, he, like, he is so much like his father, but he never let himself believe that he was cursed by a demon that he let out of a Pixis so that he wouldn't love anyone. He just, you know, is in love with the wrong girl. That's, that's normal. That's teenage angst, and I love it. Uh, Will kind of was such an asshole to Tessa, and not there for that, but he redeems himself a bit. Kind of like he treats her awesome after that, but um, he didn't need to be an asshole to her. So there's that. And it's going to be James over Will. <laughs> Every time. Question 18 is if you could meet Cassie, what is one thing you would say to her? So I would either say thank you. Thank you so much for creating a world that just pulls you in and keeps you there and just affects your emotions so much. Or I would ask her how she comes up with this and what inspired her to write it. And question 19 is if you could play any character on the Shadowhunter TV show, which character would you be? Personally, I think I'm just missing the bright curly red hair to play Clary. Um, if they had her aged at 15, 16 years old, like she should have been from the books, I think I would have played a really great Clary, um, but that's just because like I have a similar personality to her and I'm short, I have the physical, like, I have the physical features of her other than my hair, which I get is one of the things that's big about Clary, but hair can be changed. I think I would have played a good Clary. Alrighty guys, that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments section below what Bruin you would have tattooed on you and which book is your absolute favorite and why? Like why would you have that Bruin and why is that book your favorite? I really want to know.